Alright, so in this section of the video, I'm going to show you how to server-side render each of your page routes in your Vite Plus React project. So basically, I'm going to show you how to use different page routes. Basically, you can have different pages in your application and all of those pages will be server-side rendered. So before you watch this video, make sure you've watched the first part of this video where I show you how to normally server-side render a React.js application, basically a Vite Plus React.js application. So once you've watched that, you should be watching this video next because this is a continuation of that video. So this is the second video of how to convert your React.js project to an SSR React.js project. So this is the second video of the series where I show you how to convert a Vite plus React project to SSR. So I suggest you watch that video first and I'll link that video in the description below. So I'll basically show you how to use React Router DOM and SSR all your routes in your React.js project. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'll open my code editor and I'll zoom in a little bit. So in the previous video, I showed you how to SSR a React plus Vite app. Now, to be able to SSR every route of yours, what I need to do first is I need to install React Router DOM, which allows us to add different pages to our React website. So I will first install that and I'll create three to four dummy pages and then we will proceed to SSR them. So what I'll do first is I will open my terminal right over here. And here I'll write npm i react router router dom. All right, now once that's completed, the installation is completed. After that, what I'll do is I will create a pages directory within this src folder over here. So here I'll write pages. Then within this pages, I'm going to create four files, which are about.jsx, contact.jsx, home.jsx, and notfound.jsx. So these are going to be four different routes. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to write about.jsx. Similarly, another file which says contact.jsx. Then another file called home.jsx and notfound.jsx. All right. And I'm not going to write the code of each of these files here. So I'm going to paste some code over here for each of these pages and it's going to be pretty simple and self-explanatory so i'm going to copy and paste something over here so i'll go to my about.jsx i'll paste this code over here this is pretty simple as you can see i'm just exporting an about component and it has a h1 saying it's it's the about page and a p tag and a link to home page and the contact page pretty self-explanatory right now i'm also going to paste the code for contact.jsx page this is also similar. It points to home and about this time and it specifies that it's the contact page. Then I'll paste the code for the home.jsx. There you go. This points to the about and contact page and it specifies that it's the home page. Then lastly, I'll paste the code for the not found.jsx page. This, as you can see, is also again pretty self explanatory. It has a 404 page not found h1 tag and it has a link which allows us to go back to the home page. All right. So with that done, we are almost halfway there. Now we just need to make sure that we SSR, basically server-side render all of these routes. So for routing to work in our page, I obviously need to use the browser router from, from React Router DOM and wrap it in our entire React application. So routing gets enabled in our React application. So if you have seen the previous video, then you would know that entry client.jsx is the starting point of our application, basically starting point of our client side. So like in normal React apps, generally the main.jsx is our entry point, but the main.jsx isn't being used at all over here because as per the previous video, if you remember, our script points to the entry client instead of the main.jsx, we have it commented out over here. So entry client being our entry point, basically being the entry point of our client side application, we need to wrap browser router to this app component over here. Because if you remember in normal React apps, which do not have SSR, we usually wrap the browser router from the main.jsx over here because the app component gets called here. So in SSR friendly React apps, the entry point is the entry client, which calls the app component. So we need to wrap browser router over here. So all I'll do here is I will write browser router and I'll copy this app and I'll put it right over here. All right. So our app is now wrapped with the browser router. And now another thing I can do is I can actually remove this React DOM, this part over here, and I will just write hydrate root and I'll import it directly rather than writing react dom.hydrate root. All right. Now with that done, 
The next part is I will go to my app.jsx and I will import or I will call all the individual pages over here and I'll wrap our browser router to all those routes. And that will finally enable routing for our client side application. And then after that, I'm going to I'm going to add server side support for all of those pages. So in my app.jsx, the first thing I can do is over here, I will return nothing but routes. This should be routes just like that. Then here I will specify a single route. Let's also import this. And this route will have the path of slash indicating that it's the home page and its element will be nothing but as you guessed the home route. All right. So now similarly, I can do that for the remaining routes. So I'll copy this and paste it three more times. And this will point to the about page. And this will have the about route. This will point to the contact page. And it will have the contact route. And this lastly will point to the star over here, which points to the not found route, which means that anytime there's an error, go to this route over here, which will show the not found page. All right, so with that, we have our route set up for our client side application. Now we just need to add SSR support to each of these routes. All right, so now we're almost there. Now lastly, to add SSR support, all we need to do is we need to go to entryserver.jsx. And over here, if you have watched the previous video, you would know that this render to string, it just converts the entire app.jsx component to an HTML string. And then this is sent to our server.js, which is our express application. And then our server takes that HTML string and it renders that HTML. Um, so if you remember in entry server, we just export this render function, which returns the stringified version of our HTML. So this render in the server.js, it's being extracted out over here. It's being added to this variable. So render takes in nothing but a URL, which is nothing but the URL we are currently entering in our browser. So basically if I write here slash about or just slash, then if I write slash about, then the URL over here becomes slash about basically our base URL slash about. And if I write just slash, then the URL is going to be just our base URL. It comes from here request dot original URL. All right. And then finally, when we send our HTML to the client, we make sure that we put our stringified version of our HTML in this SSR outlet comment. So our stringified version of our HTML replaces this part over here. All right. So now, to be able to add SSR support to any route, we need to use something called static router over here. Now I'll explain you what static router is. Don't worry about that. First, let me just code this out. It's going to be pretty simple. All I need to do over here is to our app component. I just need to wrap this with a static router. So static router, I will copy this and I'll paste this here. So I'll wrap our app component with our static router. And this static router takes in a prop named location, which will take in nothing but the URL. So our render over here, it accepts a URL and that URL will be passed right over here. So as I just explained in our server.js, we are passing the URL to our render function, which is nothing but this one over here. And that URL needs to be passed to this location over here. So our static router can use it. Now, what is static router and why does it need this location? Well, if I hover on this, you can see a router that may not navigate to any other location. This is useful on the server when there is no stateful UI. So the browser router that we use over here in client, this contains the window object because this is present in the client. So it can use window.location and all that. But in our server, we cannot access the window because the server is not in the client side. So we cannot access the window.location and all that. That is exactly where we need to use static router, which takes in this location with the URL that tells our express app, which URL we are currently trying to hit. And then for that specific URL, we are going to take this stringified version of our app component wrapped with the static router. And based on the URL we are trying to hit, that is going to get matched with the route that we are trying to hit over here. Once the server.js exports the HTML template of that particular page to our client, that URL we are trying to hit, it goes to the static router, extracts that exact specific page we are trying to hit, converts its HTML to a string. So basically, if I was trying to go to about, the URL is going to be nothing but about in that case. And the app over here, it's going to be rendering the about over here. So our render to string will convert the about page to an HTML string. Then it will get passed down right over here to the app HTML. And then it gets replaced with the comment SSR outlet. 
which is then sent to the client to be rendered as a server side rendered page. All right. So what I'll do is for more clarity, I'll go to my browser. Then I'll search for nothing but static router, static router, react router DOM. So if you see here, if I just open the geek for geeks one, so as you can see over here, static router is a component provided by react router designed specifically for server side rendered or server side rendering or SSG scenarios. Unlike browser router, which is optimized for client side rendering in the browser environment, static router is intended for use on the server side or in environments where client side JavaScript execution is limited or non-existent. So as you can see over here in our react application on the server side, the static router is used to match the incoming HTTP request URL to the appropriate route and render the corresponding component. This allows the server to generate the initial HTML content dynamically, dynamically based on the requested URL, which is then sent to the client as part of the server response. All right. That was pretty self-explanatory. So over here, Whichever location I'm trying to access, whichever route I'm trying to access in the browser that gets passed over here from our server.js because whichever route I'm trying to access that gets boiled down to over here, request.original URL, then it gets passed to our render function over here. Then the render takes the URL, passes it to this location prop that the static router requires, which then goes to our app, matches the URL that we try to access in the browser with the component with the URL over here. And once it matches, it extracts its specific component and it renders it into an HTML string. And that is then sent from the server to the client in the index.html. And then that route is finally rendered in our browser with SSR support. Now, just to show you this works, I am going to show you in the browser itself by navigating to different routes that this actually works with SSR support. However, there's one thing I want to do first which is sometimes when I import static router from react router DOM, it causes an issue sometimes. I'm not sure why, but if I change the import statement of this static router from react router DOM to react router, then everything works seamlessly all the time. Now I'm not sure why that is, but it's pretty much because react router is the core package and react router DOM is probably just a wrapper of react router. So that's why I don't even have to install react router separately. Just write, just writing react router like this works without doing an NPM I react router explicitly. So, and one more thing I can do is I can add an async over here. Although I don't think I actually have to use an await, but I am using an async because over here, when I call the render function, we are awaiting this. So you can add an await over here, but I don't think it's necessary. Let's just test this out once. So if I go to my browser, I refresh this and I actually restart the terminal as well. Just restart this and then I'll refresh it again. And if I open my view page source, you can see I get the home page in the page source, meaning that our home page was server side rendered. And you can see I get the about and contact over here as well letting us know that we can go to about and contact from the home page. So now if I actually go to the about page, you see the route changes. And now if I do view page source over here, you see the about page was also server side rendered. So the home page was server side rendered and the about page was also server side rendered. Now if I go to contact and I do view page source and you see the contact page is also server side rendered. So any page I go to, its view page source is going to contain the pre-rendered HTML content within its div in the entire view page source, meaning that each of those pages or each of those routes have been server-side rendered. So this is exactly how you server-side render every route or every page in your React.js application. So this is going to speed up your application quite a bit because every page has the potential now to be server side rendered, meaning that Google can now crawl every page of your website properly and give a better ranking to each of your page. So that is all for this video. If you found it insightful, drop a like and subscribe for more.